So this is the week four PTS patch notes of update 41, uh, which is out in a couple weeks. It will be out uh, probably, let's see, what was it? March 11th, if I correctly. But yeah, and this will actually have some interesting notes in regards to the Necromancer uh, Blast Bones ability that was changed, much to a lot of people's chagrin. And we'll see what else is there. Uh, that's like the only thing I see from the skim up here. So let's see. All right. Necromancer Gravelord Sacrificial Bones. This ability and the Gravelord Sacrifice Morph, the new morphs or new skills, now increases your damage done with class abilities and damage over time effects rather than only Gravelord abilities and damage over time effects. So I guess that's nice. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's going to make a significant difference. If they extend it outside of Gravelord or not, in terms of just keeping within the class abilities. Yeah, I really don't see any... I think that's a minuscule kind of buff for Necromancer, at least with the new Blast Bones. Um, I would maybe like to see potentially maybe direct damage instead of just class abilities or something like that. Uh, again, minuscule buff. And I'm kind of curious as to why. While this won't influence too many extra abilities, it should help reward some niche interaction without any harm. Yeah, I mean, it's it just means we did this because we didn't really think this was going to result in any imbalance or OP-ness of the Necromancer. Uh, <laughs> Gravelord Sacrifice Morph. The Magicka Morph, which is not the old Morph of Blast Bones. This Morph now causes your Flame Skull and Morph's third cast to deal their damage in an area around the initial target and create a corpse at their location. Rather than increasing your damage done with the affected abilities to 20%, now shares the 15% base, and causing you to be treated as a corpse for your next corpse consuming ability. Okay, so your Flame Skull and Morph's Third cast will deal AoE damage around the initial target. I'm not exactly sure what the radius is on that. And create a corpse, rather than increasing your damage done with the effective abilities 20%. Now shares the 15% base. And causing it to be treated as a corpse for your next corpse consuming ability i'm just sorry i'm just like mulling it over my head uh rather than increasing damage down on the show okay so they made this skill affect the flame skull rather than giving the flame skull this buff or perk of creating an aoe damage portion on its own so you need to cast this in order to cast Flame Skull. I get, I kind of get where they're coming from because uh, as we theorize from week one PTS, like the only other source of damage consistent with their, uh, I guess, changed skill for Blast Bones is, was gonna be a Grave Lord ability. Um, and that was gonna be most likely Flame Skull as a spam wall. <laughs> so I kind of get where they're coming from. Rather than increasing your damage done with the effective abilities to fit 20%, uh, I don't know. Okay. Oh, well, let's go to the dev comment here. We've seen a lot of great feedback for the new functionality these abilities have gone through, highlighting both the good and bad that the rework provided. Things are on the right track, but we've seen many of the shortcomings that came with the initial proposals. The main areas we're hoping to improve on with this pass are the following. Your AoE damage capabilities when not taking the blood of morph as sacrificing the explosive lad led to a large loss. Okay. Yes, that uh, Blast Bones is a significant portion of a Necromancer's DPS. Uh, this disruption to the natural flow of corpse generation consumption as having all of your corpse spawn around you, that was a huge thing because what if you need to put a tether on your target or a boss? <laughs> You're not going to move to the boss, for example, like under the dragon in Sunspire and cast Blast Bones and then tether to it after you come out. That, that's ridiculous. Uh, the disruption to the natural flow of corpse generation and consumption as having all of your corpses spawn around you as a caster led to a highly restricted play style that forced you into melee while making tethers far more cumbersome to use than intended. Okay, so they basically are offloading the burden of creating a corpse onto the flame skull and morphs and, and respect to morphs. 
if you use the Grave Lord's sacrifice morph. I feel like they just kind of made it a, uh, made it more complicated than the actual like previous iteration of blast bones in some ways. So I I don't know. I don't know what to say here. I feel like they definitely saw the feedback. They definitely saw uh, people's comments on the forums and probably the videos. I don't know if this is the right track, but we'll see. Um, the above adjustment should help alleviate some of the issues the rework imposed while still offering relatively familiar advantages and experiences to the original ability, but with a simpler to use and build around rotation. I, again, I, 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 I question if this is a simpler to use or build around rotation, or if blast bone, the old blast bones rotation was uh, hard. And I feel like they did not look at the potential, other potential causes of why Necromancer as a class, uh, after, you know, since it's like slow decline since 2019, isn't attractive to players or players to use. I don't know what they're basing the metrics on, when they say, oh, Necromancer is too hard to play uh, in terms of rotation for PvE or PvP. Uh, so we'll just try to make things simpler. I don't know how you even get that metric uh, unless you pull people uh, or maybe kind of guess from looking at how many, which abilities are used the most or not. I, I don't know. I seriously doubt that the old Blast Bones rotation, while yes, sometimes frustrating, or uh, maybe clunky at times, depending on the fight or scenario, especially with Tether or Blast Bone sometimes bugging out, I don't think it was hard. Uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on this ability and it's more as the year progresses and data comes in. We are aware that the ability likely still hasn't hit its perfect mark just yet, but we're hopeful that it's still an improvement for a large amount of players who are previously put off by how the main class was. Uh, okay, so demanding. Uh, okay. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Like, if you look at it from the raid perspective, if you are a necromancer, you're more than likely a EC crow. Maybe sometimes you're doing EC and martial knowledge, and that's not really the class, that's really the item sets. EC is sort of tied in with the necromancer class because of siphon, but siphon... It's a matter of when it's when EC is not bugged with Siphon. It's a matter of just keeping up your Siphon on target as best as you can in terms of keeping up the lightning uptimes. Everything else like fire and frost damage is like just should should be pretty high because it comes naturally with something like a wall of fire or um, the graveyard skill <laughs> for, for frost. So I don't know. I, I again I'm 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 really curious to see how they judged Necromancer was demanding compared to some other classes. I feel like Nightblade is the more demanding than Necromancer, and they have somewhat simplified Nightblade rotation over the course of several patches, including this one, uh, but it's not rewarding compared to some other classes like Dragon Knight or Arcanist or even Sorcerer. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. We'll see. But very, very minuscule buff in terms of the Gravelord sacrifice change for your dot plus making the corpse uh, st uh, stay at the target with Flame Skull. I feel like it's convoluted, but sure, we can call it a buff in some ways. Necromancer's dependency on corpse generation and placement of corpses relative to enemies by default makes it more difficult to maximize its potential for casual players, as opposed to the complicated philosophy point and beam of the Arcanist. So I, I feel like with that logic, you can apply that to things like putting a wall down on the target or putting a dot on the target. I think when you actually get into the rotation or the older rotation necromancer, you're just targeting the target, pressing blast bones every two GCDs. It's basically a shorter dot. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I don't think it's complicated. Uh, maybe that is the difference between casual players and more experienced players. Bully. And he's toxic. Thanks, Weezer. Uh, thanks for the follow and everything. But uh, incoming complaints on the YouTube comments. But I, I don't know. I really don't know if Blast Bones was the primary reason why people didn't like Necromancer. Uh, for me, personally, 
it was more to do with Siphon, especially because I've played through the many iterations of the different Necromancers since elsewhere. Um, I don't... Blast Bones was for sure doo-doo in the first few patches, but it got gradually a bit better. But Siphon was a huge problem for me. It really annoyed me. Uh, I, I really just don't know if Necromancer was complicated. <laughs> That's really my rant here. Uh, anything else? Clever Alchemist. Fix an issue where this set could stack in some cases. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. So <laughs> I think there's a story behind this one, but whatever. We'll, we'll kind of skip over that story. Fixed an issue where the telegraph for this set was visible to the caster and enemies rather than just enemies. Cinders of Anthomir. Uh, all right. So they kind of changed or adjusted the dungeons. I heard the dungeons are easier than uh, typical. So I, I know a lot, of, a few, not a lot, but a few groups have already gotten Trifecta, and I think someone soloed it already on VET. So, all right, that's really it. There isn't anything else. I am really, really surprised that they have not addressed the new Mythic yet. The Torque of the Last Day Leaking, is that coming in week five? I'm really curious why they think that's okay as it is. Maybe they... Forgot to mention the patch notes. Uh, week five typically doesn't have much, but maybe we'll be surprised. Maybe things will think big things will happen in week five next week. So I'll keep you guys updated. 